Good morning. It is the 10th of May. I have just left the Villa Guest Ranch, which is this sort of unique place just off of the CDT. Over this cattle guard here. And uh, has, uh, has shower facilities and uh, a flush toilet and uh, propane tanks to cook on. And they have a fridge that they stock with eggs and potatoes. So I sort of had uh, a breakfast scramble both for dinner last night and for breakfast this morning. And, uh, but I'm, I'm always interested in people who set up like a hostel or some sort of refuge for hikers and their motivations for doing so. Some people do it out of a straight religious obligation to provide for the sojourner. Some people are devoted to the hiking community, if you will, and want to give back to that. I can think of a hostel on the AT uh, whose owner told me straight up, uh, the AT saved his life. And so he established a hostel uh, there in order to uh, give back and also provide something of a livelihood. Some people just do it from straight economics. They have some facilities, they have a house, and they want to make money. Okay, no problem. Uh, the Davila Ranch is donations only. Uh, not sure what their motivation is, but I'd be interested to, to know. I don't know where their home is. I'm sure it's somewhere <laughs> in the immediate vicinity here, but I haven't seen it. I saw from the logbook that several people that I went out from Doc Campbell's with that's, that's not grammatical, uh, that I saw at Doc Campbell's, last saw at Doc Campbell's, uh, came through Davila Ranch two days before I did, so they've been making bigger miles. Uh, motivated to get to Pie Town today. Uh, Pie Town is where I pick up my box for resupply, but I'm motivated to get there in time for a restaurant meal I believe the cafe closes at 3 p.m., so I want to get there uh, before then. <laughs> it's amazing how food, something so elemental as just food, uh, can get you going on a long-distance hike. Beautiful day, very clear. It was cold last night. There was ice in a bucket that was open to the sky and had radiation loss. Uh, so, right around freezing temperatures last night. Uh, looking forward to a good, cool morning of hiking here. And hoping you're having a good day. So, here is the left shoe of my Lone Peaks. And you can probably see that all is not correct here. Yeah. So these, oh, had a few hundred miles on them uh, before I even started uh, on the CDT. And I was hoping to make them all the way to Chama, uh, where I'm going to have a mail drop with my uh, winter gear on it. And I have a, another pair of ultras. These are temps that I wanted to start using there. But I don't think that's going to work because these are not going to make it uh, all the way to Chama. I can see now. New Mexico has been harder on these shoes than I would have thought. And uh, probably also the Gila River being wet and banging on the rocks there all the time. Uh, these shoes, both left and right, have already had one application of shoe goo. And I know from 
prior experience that by the second uh, application of shoe goo, your shoes are in a death spiral. So you need to be making plans. So when I get into uh, Pie Town and get some internet service, I'm going to probably see if I can have REI send me something to grants. I'm, I'm going to have to see if I can, uh, if we can make that rendezvous. Uh, but probably going to have to just order a brand new pair of shoes. And it's, uh, yeah, that's going to be the most efficient, uh, the quickest way to get me some shoes. The other thing you can see, there's like actually like a little hole here, right? And underneath there, um, sand and gravel has been coming in for the past couple days. So, uh <laughs> I can wear gaiters, but the but the gravel comes right in to the bottom of the shoe, and it's grinding uh, down the socks and you know right next to my skin. Uh, fortunately, my skin is pretty tough underneath, but you know it's it's wearing holes in the socks with all that grinding. And the other thing that's sort of interesting about this because the sand will come in with every step and it sort of gets scooped in by this little flap here and then with every step forward the sand and gravel will come flying out and uh, it provides a little amusement uh, to me uh, on uh, on these long flat dirt road stretches where every stride I'm getting a new fresh scoop of sand and dirt and gravel and then some of it gets expelled out. The things that keeps your mind amused when you're going hour after hour down a dirt road. <laughs> I love the entrances to these ranches and their artwork on top. Elk and deer and rope and calves and prancing ponies and watering horses from windmills. Can't see the ranch house. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of that mesa. I should be able to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, this whole area around here is just beautiful with the with the built up uh, mountains around here. Yeah. Okay. Back to the road. Well, I'll go over these hills and somewhere after the vanishing point here, the road will take a 90 degree hook to the left and it'll be uh, another five miles into Pie Town. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please. I welcome you to Pie Town. Pie Town, New Mexico. A town devoted in all its delicious delectable flaky crustiness to the production and consumption of what the eminent food critic and noted author Morgan W. W. Murphy, also a close personal friend of mine, has declared to be one of the major food groups, pie. Can't wait to try the pie. Going down the main street of Pie Town, and according to my GPS, I should be coming up to where I will be staying the Toaster House. Why they call it that? Oh, 
wonder if you could mistake this for a different address. UPS pro has, apparently has a problem with it. <laughs>